put on her like red candy. It's four pounds. 
That is known as the boulet, or the cannonball. But to send that projectile downrange, we need another ingredient, the poudre, or the powder. That powder is stored in a the petite magasin, which is often dug into the ground to protect it. And the canonier, the gunner here, will use his skill in scooping out the appropriate amount of loose powder with one of his tools and place that into the barrel. But we need another ingredient. It is known as wadding, specifically bouchon de forat, wadding of porridge. It's hay or grass rolled up into these little donut-shaped objects and placed down the barrel. Now that solid shot is great when firing at targets far away. But if we if the enemy becomes closer, we can switch to a different type of shot. This is known as ultimate play. There's no exact French translation, but it is just a tin can full of jagged bits of metal. And when fired, this will spray out, acting like a large shotgun shot. Now we can also expedite the firing of this isle in utilizing what is known as gagouche which is a bag of papel or paper and at one end is going to be all of the iron, and at the other end is the powder, all contained in that little pre-made package. Now to fire off these guns safely and effectively, these men will follow a 34-step process set about in an ordinance in the 1750s, which gives these men the instruction on how to do so. And in following these orders, the first command they will hear is, they will make their way behind the gun lining up. They'll make their way up onto the platform and they will take up their levers. These levers are simple wooden machines that will amplify the strength of the men to be able to move this cannon around. They're going to embed the levers behind the glass to the cheek and into the wheels of the carriage. Off the battery. It needs to be pulled out so that I can be loaded. Put the levers back to their place. The man to the left front picks up his accuvion, or a sponge staff. It's a long wooden pole with cheap sleeves on one end of it, and it's going to be dipped into water, and then... The man to the left rear takes off the chapiteau, or that small house that's covering the lumière, and he puts his thumb right on that touch point. Now the gunner will head back to the petite magasin with his lantern, or his ladle, a copper spoon on a long wooden pole, and he's going to expertly scoop out the amount of loose powder he needs. The man in the left front has now been given the command to swab the gun. He will place it down there, turning it around, and waiting for the command to... Take out the sponge staff and put it back to its place. Did you hear that noise? That's the breaking of the vacuum caused by man putting his thumb on the touch the Put the powder down the barrel. By placing that down the barrel and then rotating it 90 degrees, he deposits all of that loose powder. Take out the lantern or the ladle and return it to its place. Put the wadding on top of the powder. The man to the right front, who was on that lever, is going to go up and put that into the barrel. The man to the left front takes up that staff once again, but now he uses the other side of it, the refoua, or the rammer. And he uses the weight of that staff to ram down the wadding and the powder firmly against the breech of the barrel. Return the rammer not to its place, but instead to the embrasure, because he needs it again soon. The man to the left rear will go up to the shot pile and put a cannonball into the barrel. Again, the man to the right front puts another wadding on top of that cannonball. Again, he takes up his rammer. He's going to ram down wad, shot, wad, and powder firmly again. Take out the rammer and return it to its place. Back to the levers now. Embed them once again. Onto the battery. Now, utilizing the levers as well as gravity, 
helps them move it in because this platform is at a slight angle. Don't be so overstressed. Now the gun needs to be aimed, but in doing so, we're going to put our levers onto the cheeks as well as underneath the control of the barrel. Point there. There's the command to aim. Using the aiming tool, this man will place Cheech on top of the breech and he will use voice command. Up! Up! Ah! Or down! And then hand signals for side to side to not cause confusion. Well, once satisfied in aiming, next step is to... Is to prime. He uses on his left side the corn de morse, or the priming horn. And he will fit down into that lumiere, that touch hole, with a brass pick, the epinglet, or the iron one, the degorgeois, making a secure connection. The boot! Man in the left rear goes back to the foot foot. This is the linstick, a long pole with two iron dragon's heads, and in their jaws is slow burning match, a piece of rope specially treated. The man to the right from that gunner heads up to the wall to the embrasure so he can see where the shot is fired. Hot the Yet even with these 